Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm delighted that you joined me today. Today's episode honors and pays tribute to Dr. Maya Angelou. Now, most of us know Dr. Angelou as an amazing poet and writer. Well, she is both and so much more. Before I delve into today's episode, I want to express my gratitude to you and tell you a little bit about what legacy is all about and why it's so important to me, and I hope for you as well. First, my gratitudes. I also say that if you get gratitude right, you know what? If you get gratitude right, you get the rest for free. So here we go. I want to give a big thank you to those of you who are listening in today. I also want to give a great big shout out to all of you listening all around the world. I'm delighted and so grateful that you tuned in. I sure hope you're enjoying a fabulous day today and that you're having a fantastic week. Because you know what? In the grand song of the universe, life is very short. It's short and sweet and very precious. So I hope you're making a difference in your own life because when you do, you also make a difference in someone else's life. Now, a lot of us, a lot of folks really want to make their life count for something, but they don't know how to do it or it seems so big. They don't know where to begin. So they ask me, Dr. Gloria, how do you do that? How do you make your life count? It's very simple, very simple. You make your life count day by day, step by step, moment by moment, every single day, 365, 24-7. You make your life count by being there for someone who needs the pleasing fragrance of your presence, by the simple loving things you do for someone, by being an uplifter, an encourager, by taking a walk with someone you love, by making dinner or selecting a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Maybe you bake a batch of cookies for your neighbor's kids, or you call your mom or visit her, and then you hold her hand in yours even when she no longer knows your name. After a day of teaching, or when he knows I've been facilitating a retreat maybe for several days, or I'm with a client that's particularly busy for me, my husband will run a warm bath for me just because. (laughs) That's right, just because. It's not my birthday or Valentine's Day or Mother's Day. He does it for me just because. You make a difference by being grateful for who you are, being grateful for your family and friends, and by counting your blessings. And we can go beyond simply counting our blessings. We can go beyond by being a blessing. I remember a time when I was leading a a course for uh, a group of executives, all kinds of leaders in the public sector. So there were policemen, firefighters, agency directors, city council members, school board leaders, executive directors in nonprofits and in philanthropic organizations, leaders in the military, and leaders who work with our youth. Now, this was their very last class in a two-year executive leadership program. And my class, this very last class, was all about legacy. Now, I have a different take on legacy than most people in Western culture. I mean, you know the drill. Legacy is what this show is all about, right? Legacy living. We create legacy every single moment, every single day. So it's not about waiting until the very end of our life or, you know, waiting until we are about to retire, to think about our legacy. We actually create our legacy every single day. 
every text message, every Instagram, okay? All of those make a difference. So like I said, legacy in this class for leaders, this particular class was all about legacy. So you know what we did? I had them share stories. That's right. I had them share stories about someone or something near and dear to their hearts. My, oh my, I just want to tell you, they shared deeply and passionately about why they were called to be public servants, about why they were called to be servant leaders. I mean, their stories were absolutely powerful. Now, this group of leaders had been together in the same program, in the same cohort for 21 months. Now, that's nearly two years. And through the stories they shared, they were now learning stuff (laughs) about one another that they hadn't heard before. 21 months, imagine that. And they hadn't heard this stuff before. So they were hearing these incredible stories about one another's lives. You know what? Sometimes we just need to hit the pause button. We just need to hit pause. Sit across the table from someone, pour a cup of tea, or a cup of coffee, and just listen. Just listen to their story. That's exactly how we can make a difference in somebody else's life. That's another way to do it, right? Muriel Rukeyser is one of my favorite poets, and she reminds us that the world is not made up of atoms. Oh no, it is not made up of atoms. It is made up of stories. Don't you just love that? The world is not made up of atoms. It is made up of stories. That's what Legacy Living Make Your Life Count is all about. You can learn more about Legacy Living Make Your Life Count by visiting my website. That's the Gloria Burgess website. Or by visiting me on Facebook or LinkedIn. You can also find me on the TEDx site and listen to one of my TED Talks. Just type in my name to find me there. And if you want to receive my weekly inspirations, again, go to my website. That's the Gloria Burgess website. Scroll down just a little bit and look on the right-hand side and simply put your email address in that little box in the sidebar and click Submit. It's that simple. And what you're signing up for is a weekly inspirational quote along with a beautiful image so you can get yourself off to a fabulous, inspiring day and week. Again, go to my website, scroll down just a little bit, look on the right hand side and simply put your email address in that little box and click submit. It's that easy. My website again is GloriaBurgess.com. Right? Okay, very easy. All right. So today's episode honors Dr. Maya Angelou. And again, most of us know her as an amazing poet and writer, but did you also know that she was an actress, a director, a filmmaker, a humanitarian, and so much more? As many of you know, during the month of February in the United States, we celebrate Black History Month. Well, you know me, I celebrate the lives of all people, no matter who they are. And I like to celebrate the lives of all people, and especially the soulful lives of African Americans. Black lives. Every single day. Not just during February, but every single day, 365, 24-7. So, who is... Maya Angelou. Well, as I mentioned a few moments ago, professionally, she was a poet, a writer, an actor, director, filmmaker, humanitarian, and she was also an amazing human being. I had the privilege and honor of meeting Dr. Angelou a number of years ago when she was in the Seattle area. I met her through a mutual friend, Dr. Maxine Mims another amazing African-American elder. Now, when I first met Ms. Maya in person, I was fascinated by her, her manner, by her presence. Now, she's worn many, many hats, including that of an actor, and I had come to see her perform. My friend took me backstage after Maya's performance. 
I really love that she looked me directly in the eye as she spoke. Like so many folks in my own family, she was plain spoken and very straightforward. No beating around the bush with her. In many ways, she reminded me of my mom and a multitude of elders in my community. Throughout my life, I have heard many people say that I remind them of Maya Angelou. Now, even though I've heard this often enough, I'm still surprised when someone says it. Why? Because I think I sound like me, (laughs) not like anybody else, right? Now, perhaps I do sound a bit like her. I don't know. After all, I was raised by folks who could just as well have raised Miss Maya. Being with Miss Angelo backstage after her inspiring performance was quite the adventure, and I must admit, it actually felt a little spooky. Not only did she remind me of the many elders in my own family and in my church, the folks in the community I grew up in, the community of folks I call my personal village, being with her backstage was kind of like looking in a mirror, because Dr. Maya also reminded me of myself. The words she used during our conversation, the words she uses in her poems, the cadence of her voice. From my meeting with Dr. Angelo, I could actually imagine her as one of the many folks in my own community. The way she sat, the way she stood, the way she walked, the way she sang, the way she reached for my hand. Her seriousness, her laughter, her earnestness, all of it. I could even imagine myself sitting at the same table with her, breaking bread together, laughing and joking about good times while we were digging into some collard greens, black-eyed peas, and cornbread. So today, we are paying tribute. We're talking about and lifting up Dr. Maya Angelo. Now, our focus is legacy. Today's episode is all about legacy as we honor Dr. Maya. My focus today is to pay tribute as well as lift up this prolific human being. Now, the best way to introduce Maya Angelou is not by sharing her many, many, many accolades and awards and prizes, not by sharing where she taught or how many films, musicals, and plays she was in or directed, or how many books she wrote, books of poetry, memoirs, and so much more. Oh, no. (laughs) The best way to introduce Maya Angelou is through her own words, through her own poetry and prose. This is a woman who stood her ground. This is a woman who would not be moved. And I'm going to say hallelujah and thank goodness for that. Her voice, and I'm talking about her actual voice now, That low contralto, the tone, the color, the weight of her voice had the gravitas that made you sit up straight. Her voice embraced you with a certainty, with a lived sense of knowing, with the assured wisdom of life overflowing, with the marvelous blessings of lessons learned. Hers was a voice that said, I have been around the block. Not once, not twice, not even thrice, but I have been around the block and inside a few rooms, up a few staircases and down into a few basements. And I know some things. Yes, I know a few things up in here. My Angelo's voice, with that clarity of cadence and presence of purpose, her actual voice, and her literary voice is certainly a voice to be reckoned with, a voice for 
the ages. Today, in tribute, I will share her poetry and prose. Some of what I share will be familiar to you, perhaps, and some may be totally new to you, as it was to me, as I did my research for this particular show. So I invite you to grab a cup of tea or coffee or a cool glass of water or lemonade or put on your walking shoes, lace them up, and grab your earbuds. We are going to have a good time today. Here is one of Miss Maya's poems. It is one of my favorites. This poem is called Still I Rise. Still I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may tread me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise. I rise. I rise. Now I just love this poem for so many reasons. I think the most significant reason is because it is a story in the voice of a woman who will not be moved. And two, it tells a story in a voice of a people, a people that will not be moved. A story about a people who will not give up, who will not give in, a people who refuse to be defined by somebody else's definition of who they ought to be. In her foreword to Brian Lanker's beautiful book called I Dream a World, Dr. Angelo writes sublimely, superbly about black women which is the singular focus of this book. 
It is all about black women who will not be moved. Now, paradoxically, in their determination, in their steadfastness, their abiding stance of not being moved, these black women became movers in their own right. Movers and shakers. In fact, the subtitle to I Dream a World is Portraits of Black Women Who Changed America. I'm going to repeat that in case... You want to write it down, okay? The title, I Dream a World, and the subtitle is Portraits of Black Women Who Changed America. Now, I want you to imagine, if you will, an oversized book, a book that's almost square. And when you open its pages, there you will see absolutely exquisite photos, all of them shot and rendered in black and white. Photos of black women who changed the world, who changed the world of their own personal villages and the communities in which they were born, raised, and came of age. Black women who also changed the larger world into which they were thrust or the larger world they chose on their own terms. On the opposite page, the facing page, is a narrative, words from each woman's own mouth, words that paint a picture of her life, words that paint a picture of her work, her family, her struggles, her loves, her hopes, her joys, her dealing with barriers and obstacles, and ultimately words that paint a vivid picture of her victories and triumphs. This book, I Dream a World, was published in 1989. When I bought it, I recognized many of the names. Now, some I became familiar with only after reading the narratives and looking into the eyes of the women who looked back at me from the pages. Even now, I keep this book on my coffee table. I continue to be inspired by these amazing women, inspired by their lives and inspired by their perseverance and by their impact. You will surely recognize some of the names of the women in this book. Actors and athletes, singers and civil rights leaders, politicians, and political activists. Names that have become part of the larger history of America. Rosa Parks, Coretta Scott King, Lena Horne, Shirley Chisholm, Fannie Lou Hamer, Alice Walker, Angela Davis, Toni Morrison, Leontine Price, Marian Anderson, Merle Evers, Barbara Jordan, Odetta, Ruby D, Gwendolyn Brooks. Some names you may not recognize, and yet these women changed the game within their sphere of influence and sometimes far beyond. Sonia Sanchez, Catherine Dunham, Eva Jesse, Janetta Cole, B. Richards, Ernestine Anderson, Willie May Ford Smith, Betty Shabazz, Wilma Rudolph, Dr. Alexa Kennedy, Septima P. Clark. To call their names is a blessing. To sing the sweet music of their names is a litany, a perfumed prayer that carries the luscious scent of gardenia, honeysuckle, night-blooming jasmine, magnolia, tuber rose. It is a prayer carried aloft, a prayer lifted up to the heavens, carried on the wings of raven, eagle, and dove. It is a holiness lifted up in rooms filled with the sweet remembrance of breaking bread together, shouting, wailing, 
calling on the name of Jesus and falling on our knees. It is the pipe drift of cherry tobacco lifted onto the breezes of dawn and again at dusk. It is a prayer lifted up in honor of the red clay roads we have trod to arrive here. To arrive here in the present. A prayer lifted up to bless the road ahead as we look into the heavens and behold the bright, shining, guiding star that lights the way to our luminous future. What a blessing to call the names of these women who have built roads and bridges, who have cleared paths and broken new ground for me, for us, for all of us, and for our children. Dr. Maya Angelou is one of those names. She is one of the women featured in I Dream a World. Her powerful prose is also featured in the foreword. In her own words, this truth teller says, Black women whose ancestors were brought to the United States beginning in 1619 have lived through conditions of cruelties so horrible, so bizarre. The women had to reinvent themselves. They had to find safety and sanctity inside themselves, or they would not have been able to tolerate their torturous lives. They had to learn to be self-forgiving quickly, for often their exterior exploits were at odds with their interior beliefs. Still, they had to survive as wholly and healthily as possible in an infectious and sick climate. Ms. Maya goes on to say, Lives lived in such cauldrons are either obliterated or forged into impenetrable alloys. Thus, early on and consciously, Black women as reality became possibilities only to themselves. To others, they were mostly seen and described in the abstract, concrete in their labor, but surreal in their humanness. Can I just tell you something? What Maya is saying here continues even today. Sad, but true. I can certainly relate to what she is saying here. I was born in rural Mississippi at a time when Jim Crow laws had been outlawed, taken off the books. Those horrible, cruel laws were gone. They were no longer valid. Now, they were supposed to govern, to rule the behaviors of folks in the South. But in reality, life was still lived as if these abominable laws were still in full and furious force. So you might say, well, that was then, this is now. Yes, you're right. That was then, and this is now. Not too long ago, I was teaching, I was ministering to a cohort of executive leaders. These leaders have been called to become public servants. These people were called to serve. You hear me, right? <laughs> In that room were a handful of people of color. Two of them were African American. I shared my own story about being born in Mississippi and having come of age during the turbulence of the civil rights movement. I want you to hear me now. I want you to get this. To a person, all the people of color had a similar story. Some of them were born and raised as second, third, and fourth generation immigrants, okay? Yet we all shared a story similar 
story about having to become possibilities to ourselves. Because mainstream culture does not recognize or validate us. Now slowly, surely, this is changing. But in many places, we're still treated as though we are invisible. Still treated as if we do not exist. Still treated as if we are a blip on a page, a blip on a screen. One that can be easily obscured and sometimes just erased altogether. I pinch myself every day because I get to work with folks like this as part of what I do. As a teacher, as a businesswoman, as a creative artist, as a social artist, I get to make a difference in their lives. Now I have something to tell you about Dr. Angelo. Years ago, when I first started studying her poems and her life, she was my role model. (laughs) At that time in my life, I didn't know how to describe my own work. Well, that's not totally true. I did know how to describe it, but I didn't know how to describe it in a way where other folks could, you know, deal with me. (laughs) You see, I was working in high tech. Yes, imagine me working in corporate America. I did that for 23 years. In fact, I was the highest ranking African American female executive when I left corporate, okay, and started my own company. Now, these days, I am an executive coach, speaker, trainer, facilitator, and organizational consultant. And I know that God has a sense of humor. How do I know that? Because when I look back at my life and my life experience, He put me in the wilderness, in the desert on the raging white river so that I could learn what I needed to know in order to do the work I'm doing now. How cool is that? God is so amazing. So we have time for another poem by Miss Maya. This poem is called Caged Bird. Caged Bird. In this poem, she borrows from another great soul and poet, She borrows images and metaphors, even the central image of the caged bird. She borrows from a poem called Sympathy by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Dr. Angelo's poem is called Caged Bird. The free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with fearful trill of the things unknown but longed for still. His tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn-bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on a distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Now, this image, this metaphor 
of the caged bird appears again in Maya's first autobiographical book, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which I like to think of as a poem told in prose. William Carlos Williams reminds us, it is difficult to get the news from poems. Though men, and I'd say women too, <laughs> die miserably every day for lack of what is found there. Miss Maya's poems remind me that inside of every poem is a bit of news. News that shines the light on what it means to be human. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maya Angelou. Today, we celebrate you. We celebrate the majestic music of your life, and we express our deep, deep gratitude. We thank you for showing us what legacy living is all about. Now, as you know, I love to celebrate black lives, black history, every single day, 365, 24-7. Now, if you missed last week's episode or any part of this week's, you can listen to the recording at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. You can find me right here on iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. Before I close today, I want to thank each of you for tuning in, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this has been Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time right here for another show of Legacy Living, Make your life count. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Have a fantastic day and remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what legacy living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count. <laughs>